There was a man dwelt by a churchyard. His house had a lower story of stone and an upper one of timber. The front windows looked out on the street and the back ones on the churchyard. It had once belonged to a parish priest, but the priest was a married man and wanted more room. Besides, his wife disliked seeing the churchyard at night out of her bedroom window. She said she saw, but never mind what she said. Anyhow, she gave her husband no peace till he agreed to move into a larger house in the village street. And the old one was taken up by John Poole, who was a widower and lived there alone. He was an elderly man who kept very much to himself, and people said that he was something of a miser. It was very likely true. He was morbid in other ways, certainly. In those days, it was common to bury people at night and by torchlight, and it was noticed that whenever a funeral was toward, John Poole was always at his window, either on the ground floor or upstairs, according as he could get a better view from one or the other. There came a night when an old woman was to be buried. She was fairly well to do, but she was not liked in the place. Oh, the usual thing was said of her, that she was no Christian, and that on such nights as Midsummer Eve and All Hallows, she was not to be found in her house. She was red-eyed and dreadful to look at, and no beggar ever knocked at her door. Yet, when she died, she left a purse of money to the church. There was no storm on the night of her burial. It was fair and calm. But there was some difficulty getting bearers and men to carry the torches in spite of the fact that she had left larger fees than common for such as did that work. She was buried in woolen, without a coffin. No one was there but those who were actually needed, and John Poole watching from his window. Just before the grave was filled in, the parson stooped down and cast something upon the body, something that clinked, and in a low voice he said words that sounded like, Thy money perish with thee. Then he walked away quickly, and so did the other men, leaving only one torch-bearer to light the sexton and his boy while they shoveled the earth in. They made no very neat job of it, and next day, which was a Sunday, the churchgoers were rather sharp with the sexton, saying it was the untidiest grave in the yard. And indeed, when he came to look at it himself, he thought it was worse than when he had left it. Meanwhile, John Poole went about with a curious air, half exulting, as it were, and half nervous. More than once he spent an evening at the inn, which was clean contrary to his usual habit, and to those who fell into talk with him, there he hinted that he had come into a little bit of money and was looking out for a somewhat better house. Well, I don't wonder, said the smith one night. I shouldn't care for that place of yours. I should be fancying things all night. The landlord asked him what sort of things. Well, maybe somebody climbing up the chamber window? Or the like of that, said the smith. I don't know. Old Mother Wilkins that was buried a week ago today, eh? Come, I think you might consider a person's feelings, said the landlord. It ain't so pleasant for Master Poole, is it now? Master Poole don't mind, said the smith. He's been there long enough to know. I only says it wouldn't be my choice. What with the passing bell, and the torches when there's a burial, and all them graves laying so quiet when there's no one about. Only they say there's lights. Don't you never see no lights, Master Poole? No, I don't never see no lights, said Master Poole sulkily, and called for another drink and went home. That night, as he lay in his bed upstairs, a moaning wind began to play about the house, and he could not go to sleep. He got up and crossed a room to a little cupboard in the wall. He took out of it something that clinked and put it in the breast of his bedgown. Then he went to the window and looked out into the churchyard. Have you ever seen an old brass in a church with a figure of a person in a shroud? It is bunched together at the top of the head in a curious way. Something like that was sticking up out of the earth in a spot of the churchyard which John Poole knew very well. He darted into his bed and lay there very still indeed. Presently, something made a very faint rattling at the casement. 
With a dreadful reluctance, John Poole turned his eyes that way. Alas! Between him and the moonlight was the black outline of the curious bunched head. Then there was a figure in the room. Dry earth rattled on the floor. A low, cracked voice said, Where is it? And steps went hither and thither, faltering steps as one walking with difficulty. It could be seen now and again peering into corners, stooping to look under chairs. Finally, it could be heard fumbling at the doors of the cupboard in the wall, throwing them open. There was a scratching of long nails on the empty shelves. The figure whipped around, stood for an instant at the side of the bed, raised its arms, and with a hoarse scream of, You've got it! Ah! 